This is my model rocket Eagle landing for the first time last summer. It took a lot of development and testing to get it to this point, but eventually we were able to get it to work. But frankly, I got pretty lucky. That day we launched the rocket three other times. Two of those times came close to landing, while the other time the rocket crashed due to a faulty E-match. Even on the successful landing, one of the legs didn't fully lock out. Although it still was enough to keep it upright, it wasn't exactly elegant. So I want to fix this. I want to see if I can land it again, but I want to see if it can land better this time. So in this video, I'll show you how I ended up upgrading Eagle, how I tested it, and how well those changes ended up working. To make this rocket better, we can either tackle it with hardware and or software, and I didn't think the software needed to be changed. The very first Eagle flights were rough, and the rocket was nowhere near the ground to land. But after a summer of fine-tuning the flight software and offline simulation, it eventually started doing its job really well. In fact, if we plot the landing drop distance of all the previous flights, we can see just how much better it got. The last handful of flights only had a median drop height of 1.4 meters with a high point of 1.6 meters and a low point of 0.4 meters, which meant that future flights were likely to drop within this window as well. And this isn't an unrealistic window. The rocket should be able to handle these drop distances. The problem then really comes down to hardware and how the legs are designed and their rigid nature. When the rocket drops, it isn't able to absorb any energy, so it either tends to jump back up and fall over, or if it has any lateral movement, it tends to want to rotate and tip over. So funny enough, the reason that Eagle landed last time might have been only because the leg didn't fully lock into place, and therefore ended up damping that rotation. So what we really need to do is give the rocket a suspension system. On a car, that suspension system comprises of coils and dampers, which redirect and absorbs the energy as the car drives down the road. The current problem is the rocket isn't absorbing any energy when it falls to the ground at all. So at the point of impact, that kinetic energy acts back on the rocket and ends up springing it back into the air. To fix this, we need to transfer that energy elsewhere on impact. We could transfer it to other forms of kinetic energy, like moving air through a small hole in a syringe. We could also use friction to transfer that mechanical energy into wasted thermal energy. Or we could take that energy and convert it to potential energy by compressing a spring. And that's what I decided to do. The plan here was to have the top strut compress against the spring, but I needed it not to be able to spring back. So for design inspiration, I turned to a ratchet strap. With these, as you pull the handle to tension it up, there are teeth that slide across a locking mechanism, thereby storing the tension of the strap. The only way to reset it is to disengage that locking mechanism so that the strap releases the tension. I took this concept and designed an outer body with a locking clip that slides over an inner body with teeth while compressing a spring. The parts fit together in a square peg so that they can't rotate, and I put a rubber band around the outer piece to help that clip stay snug against the teeth. To reset the legs, all I would have to do is pull back that clip to allow the inner piece and strut to slide back to its original position. These two parts were made using my 3D printer and PLA filament, and I used 5mm carbon fiber rods for the top strut once again. These rods were then friction fit to both pieces and didn't require any epoxy, because if the outer part failed then I could replace a new one quickly and be able to reuse the other components on this top strut. Because the top strut was going to compress, it meant that the golden feet needed to be longer so that the strut couldn't slip out underneath. I then printed it with PLA and epoxied it to the same length of 3mm carbon fiber rods as the last leg design so that it could be a drop in replacement. This new design also fixes the leg deployment issues we were seeing on the last day of flights. You can see here the leg bounce a little bit, followed by the strut fully coming out of place after this. I think on some pieces that tape just wasn't deep enough to prevent the top strut from bouncing out. This time though I added a zip tie closer to the rocket on this piece, and after a few leg deployment tests, things started looking pretty good. Before I started the drop tests, I ended up reprinting the damper parts in red, just to give the rocket some flair. I wasn't sure which springs to use, so I started with weaker ones and moved up from there. But the first tests looked really promising. Right up until this. I definitely had a spring that was too weak for this drop, so all the energy loaded into the legs, which at least exposed this weak point in the inner damper piece. Luckily, the fix was easy enough. I just reinforced the neck, 
but then also sink that carbon fiber rod deeper into the piece to give it extra support. Kind of like rebar into concrete. For the next test, I added stronger springs to the legs, but they weren't locking into place like I intended and instead spring back. Turns out that the red pieces were consistently failing at the clip with these springs, but if I used some white pieces that I printed, it would suddenly work just fine with the same springs. I went down a rabbit hole with this one, but turns out the pigmentation in PLA has a measurable effect on the PLA's material properties. I'll leave a link in the description below that goes over all of that, but in the end I printed everything with white or gray, and the test got much better. Oh yeah, that's cool. With these new legs performing much better than the older version, Eagle was ready to fly again. Going forward, we transitioned all eagle landing attempts from wet grass to dirt, just for extra safety, so we found a large ballpark nearby to launch at. I ended up reaching out to the local parks and rec department just to be safe, and they ended up giving us permission to fly eagle here, so a huge thanks to them for that. Always check the rules and regulations for launching model rockets where you live, and if you're unsure of those, I highly recommend checking with the local authorities to be safe. Yeah, so that was my fault. The night before the flight, I had added some code to make Eagle wait to ignite the second motor so that the rocket would hit the ground a little bit early. The theory was, if we hit early, then the legs would absorb the shock well enough, and then the motor would be too weak to push the rocket back into the air. Had I spent just a little bit of time analyzing the physics behind this idea, I would have learned that it was not the way to go, because that motor had plenty of power to cause a second takeoff. Moral of the story, don't make major changes just hours away from launch time. Luckily, since I've crashed a lot of these rockets, I learned a long time ago to come with extra parts. So I repaired the legs and re-uploaded the flight software without that offset this time, in hopes Flight 2 would be better. So after just two attempts, and the first one being my fault, Eagle landed again. This time, all legs locked out, and even better, we can see the damper system working. It's subtle, but after the rocket taps down and pitches over slightly, you can see that one leg ends up absorbing all that energy, and the rocket comes to a complete stop. So super happy with how the legs performed, and even more happy that we got a second landing in for this project. I have spent a lot of time and energy on this project over the last few years. So with that landing, I think I'm finally happy to put this project to rest for now and to move on to other things. So if you like cool rocket projects or other projects revolving around 3D printing, software design, microcontrollers, and hardware design, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all of that. Till then, thank you so much for watching. My name's Mark, and I'll see you next time.